Okay, filmmaker Kwong here, and we will back to the part two. So you can introduce yourself again. All right, Your what's real name? up? I'm McHenry Cruiser, YouTube celebrity, famous uh, YouTube celebrity. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've single-handedly launched this platform into the stratosphere. That's what I've done. So yeah. And what's your real name? We didn't do that last time. My real name? Yeah. Uh, okay, my real name is Nicholas. Uh, why do you name yourself McHenry? Well, because uh, McHenry was the name of a street near uh, a city where I grew up that uh, people used to cruise on for members of the opposite sex, hence the name McHenry Cruiser. Is the street still there? Yeah, it's a, it's a street named McHenry Avenue. It's still there, yeah. It's the in Modesto, California. The houses are still there, right? There's still someone living there uh, right yeah, now. Yeah. Uh, do you... uh, wait, what? what was that? Uh, th there are still houses, right? Uh, well, this is a street with businesses on it. Uh, you know, fast food restaurants, uh, Walmart, uh, Target, uh, various pharmacies. It's not a residential street, you know. Okay. And what about Cruiser? Why do you name yourself Cruiser? Well, well, because uh, people used to cruise oh, on okay. the street. Now, what the, the, the word cruising means, you're driving up and down the street. Like, okay, so if you're a guy, you're driving up and down the street looking for a girl in a car that you can flirt with. Have you met any girls there? You have any girlfriends? Uh, uh, no, because I only did it when I was 18, and I did try, but uh, I was not successful. Okay, so ever since you have schizophrenia, right, and... Can you get a driver license with that? You drive. I uh, yeah, I, I do drive. Uh, I just recently uh, got my car fixed, so yeah, I'm back on the road. You know. When do you have your driver's license? Well, I got my driver's license at 18 years old. So you're, pr well, that's. I I thought you could drive at Wait. six. I thought you could drive at 16, in the U.S. Oh yeah, you can. I just got mine late. I just got mine a couple of years late. Uh, and you, you think you're good at driving? Ah, uh, well, now I am. I wasn't early on. I got into a, you know a handful of car wrecks. I totaled my car once and had to replace it. Uh, I got sued once for two thousand uh, dollars. Uh, by some guy I hit whose neck I hurt. So I, I wasn't good early on, but I'm good now. I think, you know. Okay, and what do you think about school education? Uh, well, it's not for me because, I, you know, I tried going back to college. I went for like three weeks uh, just to have to sit, sit and buckle down and, and uh, study hard and read a bunch of boring shizzle that I'm not interested in is torturous for me. Like, it's not for me. I recognize that it's fine for other people. Just for myself, I, I'm, I, I'm just not school-minded. I, I just can't succeed at school. Okay, so you, 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 like, uh, you failed at school too, right? Like, failing right now? I was... Uh, yeah, I, I, well, I did when I was going to public school, and so I, I got myself pulled out of regular high school and went on independent study, which was where I met with a teacher once a week and did my uh, schoolwork at home and was able to complete it that way. Okay, and how's your high school life? Is it good with friends like that? I didn't have any friends in high school. I was pretty much a mute, a uh, selective mute. I, if somebody tried to talk to me, I would ignore them. I would stay silent. I would not say a word to anyone. Uh, and that's pretty much how it went. I only went to uh, regular high school for a year and a half before I went on to independent study to, uh, and, and well, went up graduating a year early, though. So, I mean, so that was good. It was, well, can you tell us more about how American high schools look like compared to the movies how they, they depict? Like? Yeah, compared to the movies, how they depict it? Well, well, 
in the movies, in the movies, they all seem to be they take place inside, like yeah. everybody's school yeah. locker. They always take within. They take take place inside. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's inside. Like everybody's locker is inside of a building. It seems like, and the, the, all the schools. I went to three different high schools uh, before going on an independent study, and all the lockers are on the outside. So, and, and you hang out outside. You don't hang out inside anywhere. So that's the difference. It seems like in the movies, everything takes place inside buildings. Okay, well, how about the real life? The real life American high school. In real life, uh, well, for number one, everybody's a lot younger because in the movies, you know, uh, people they they cast the the high school student they cast like twenty something year old people as high school students. In real life, we look a, a great deal younger. Everything takes place outside as opposed to inside, and it's not as nearly as dramatic and exciting as it is in the movies. Yeah, because no, well, in Hong Kong. The high schools in Hong Kong are a totally different environment. Like, um, the teachers are a lot more stricter. What about the American? Oh. The teachers, the teachers are strict. Oh uh, yeah, well, yeah, they. Uh, I would say they're strict. Sure, you know, I, I got uh, some detentions and whatnot. I mean, if you act out, if you talk back, and if if you chew bubble gum, I mean, they'll send you right to the office. They don't play no games in high school. In, in Hong, here in Hong Kong, they. They have the discipline team. Do they have that in America? Yeah, I would. I would. Admit, well, I would think. I would think it's probably worse in Hong Kong than it is in America. But it's still, you know, I don't know. We're very disciplined. We're, we're not really that bad. I mean, we're afraid yeah. of the teachers like that. You know, Asian culture. <laughs> They're all very straight. Yeah. Yeah, and. <clears throat> How how do you spend your time doing this? Like uh, the I can't say that I'm afraid I'm gonna get demonetized. Like this virus thing. How do you spend your life? How do I spend my life? Yeah, during this virus uh, thing. It's no different my life now than it was before the pan. Uh, the, you know this current situation, this current crisis. You know I pr pretty much spend all my time indoors, uh, except for when I walk the dogs in the morning. Uh, I'm mean, pretty much in this room right here or the front room all day. You know, watching YouTube videos on my phone or listening to music and whatnot. I'm pretty much a, a hermit, a homebody. I really never leave the house. But I got a car now, so maybe I'll go. You know. Eh, you know, maybe I'll go out to, to eat with a friend or something to that effect. But that's pretty much all I'm going to be doing. Like, I don't want to spend too much time outdoors because I already got, I already got it once this disease. Uh, so I don't want to get it a second you got, time. You got infected? You got infected before? Uh yeah, I did get it once. I lost my sense of taste and smell. What's it like? I I, I went. I went through cycles of shivering cold and, and being overheated to, to where I, you know, I had to take off a majority of my clothing and sit in front of the fan. Uh, I was very dehydrated, had to drink many fluids and whatnot periodically from time to time. It's it's a torturous uh, experience. Was it like you got you got tests right? You got tested. My brother got tested and he came up positive and we had the same symptoms so I didn't really feel it necessary for me to get tested because I knew what he had to go through to get tested and it's pretty painful. Okay, hold on, wait. Wait. Okay, sorry, something just popped up and... Uh, compared to the flu, which one is worse? I've only had the flu once and honestly, I'd probably say the flu w made me feel worse. Because I heard that even the flu season um, in America, there are a lot of deaths, right? A lot of people are dying from the flu like that. Uh, the seasonal yeah. influenza. Yeah. yeah, there are a lot of people that die from the flu. Uh, it's probably similar numbers, uh, those who die from the flu as who die from COVID. So, uh, so sorry, yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, because I, I remember Lamont had the flu back in the yeah. earlier this year. He was in Albuquerque. Yeah. He felt kind of like un, undazzling or something. Yeah. But, 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 but have you thought of getting the vaccines? Uh, getting vaccinated? What, what about the vaccine? Yeah, have you thought of getting it? 
getting vaccinated. I will. As soon as they release it, as, and listen, as soon as they, they come out with one, I'm getting it. Well, actually, uh, well, actually, I advise you to eat some orange, vitamin C. Oh yeah, all right. You eat vitamin oranges. C. You all eat right. oranges, orange like that. Do you eat? I, I don't. But but you know, I'll probably start now. Yeah, get some orange. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> and anyway, I saw. So a couple of your old videos, is it? Oh, the, your your video last time yesterday, your comment. Someone said, "What what's the serial killer tendency? What's that?" Uh, I think that's a troll. Some somebody trying to say that uh, you know I I have you know tendencies to be a serial murderer. <laughs> uh, uh, that, that that I fit like the criteria, or or that I have urges or, or something that affect to kill to. to Dismember. Listen, I'm not a serial killer. I'm not going to kill anybody. I, I don't have any fantasies about doing that. That is simply a troll trying to get under my skin. Okay, so, and speaking of serial killers, what do you think of um, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, Ed, Jim, whatever those names? What do you think about them? I think they're sick, they're demented, like how can they live with themselves, have they no empathy, have they no sympathy, like, no, I guess not, I guess they're born a certain way to where they, they have no feelings, they have no remorse, they, they, they can do things and not feel bad about it, they can kill animals and human beings and not feel bad about it, like, uh, yeah, uh, so, listen, I don't condone what they did, but my God, they can market themselves as superstars and celebrities. I mean, my Lord, Chief. Because there's some serial killers you never hear about, but, uh, you know, the ones like Dahmer and, and, and Ted Bundy and various others somehow become household names and celebrities. And, uh, yeah, you know, somebody's a marketing genius that, that are putting these guys in the limelight and uh, publicizing their crimes. So, you know, I am envious uh, on, on that uh, specific part of it. Yeah, but they are famous in the bad way nobody liked them that's true yeah you're I mean, not like I, I wouldn't want to be famous in a way like that i that's i would rather not be famous as opposed to be famous in a bad way but uh but if you ask them they're they're probably happy to have that fame because they were killers anyway so they might as well have the fame on top of it you know like everyone wants to be famous like brad pitt or leonardo dicaprio not in a positive yeah. way and yeah. And let me. Th what, what do you think about uh, speaking of relig religions? Are you a Christian or anything? You have any religions? I I really don't. Uh, I I would like to believe there's some higher power. There's something after death. There's some place to go, but I don't know. So I guess I'm agnostic. Okay, so you don't you don't believe in Jesus, right? You you don't really know. No, I just don't know, you know. Okay, and... No, I grew up in a Christian Catholic family. Yeah. So I... Yeah. And... How about you tell me more about the American culture like that? Like... What, well, uh, what do you guys usually most eat? Most Americans... Like, compare the... Compare the American culture depict in the movies versus the real life. Uh, the movies aren't too far off. I mean, there's so many different movies with so many, you know, various different kind of lifestyles and whatnot. The movies aren't really that far off. That's pretty much American life. You know, there's a lot of Christians. There's a lot of people that are not Christians. There's there's so many different kinds of people that uh, the, the movies are, are not too far off when it comes to you know de uh, depicting American lifestyle. So I, you know they're pretty accurate, I would think. So what what do you guys usually eat? What do we eat? Yeah, like um, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Well, I, listen, I can't speak for anybody else. I know myself, I'll have like cereal with uh, almond milk or oat milk in the morning. 
Uh, for lunch, I'll have like a snack. I'll have like a chocolate peanut butter wafer bar and, uh, you know, like a bag of chips. And then for dinner, it could be, it depends. It could be fast food like Taco Bell or Panda Express, or it could be homemade enchiladas, or, you know, it could be uh, tacos or, uh, you know, chicken sandwiches. It, it, it could be anything like that. You know? In California, there are a variety of Mexican food, it seems like. Oh yeah, I just had some carne asada nachos today from a Mexican taquera uh, uh, restaurant. So yeah, there are a lot of Mexican restaurants here. But in, in other states, I don't think they have that many Mexican food. Like in other states, we mostly have, you know, what they have. I guess so. I well, uh, well, I guess. I guess it depends on how many Mexicans are in each state. I would imagine in California, in Texas, uh, you know, those states like that, there are probably a lot more Mexican Definitely restaurants not than a place like Maine or something, you know. So, have, have you been out of California before? Like I left... I left California one time when I was 12. I went to Tijuana and then I went to Oregon, and that's the only time I left the state of California. Okay, so you've never been to other states, even Nevada. No, no. Have you, have you wished to, wish to go to like have Las? I, have you wish, wished to go to Las Vegas? Uh, no, because I'm pretty much, I'm not real outgoing, I'm not real extroverted, I'm pretty much an introvert, a homebody, I really don't like, uh, at least it, it, previously I haven't mm. really enjoyed really going out and going places and doing things, like, maybe that would change now, uh, I don't know, like, if I had somebody to go with, if I had somebody to meet up with, uh, say a black Bugatti, if he was in Vegas and wanted to meet up with me, like, yeah, I'd go for hang out with him, but I'm not gonna go by myself, you know. Well, maybe I wish I really wish ho I wish I can go to the U.S. and visit you guys, like seriously. Oh yeah, that that'd be fun. Yeah, but because of the visa stuff like that, it's very, you know, strict strict immigration policy yeah. and those stuff like that. Donald Trump, you know, his policy on visas are very tough. Oh yeah, yeah. I, can, I would imagine they are pretty tough. You know, I I don't know though. So. But there are a lot of Hong Kong immigrants in the U.S. too. It's like there maybe, are a lot of maybe there, it was. It depends on where you go. Like in San Francisco, there are a lot of Asians. I don't know if they're from Hong Kong or where they're from, but uh, it, so it depends on the area. I don't really like. Not my type, San Francisco. I like somewhere more rural, like your place. Yeah. I don't really like big cities. Oh yeah, all right. Like I can't, I can't imagine going to no going to Los Angeles, and this everywhere it's just people. Like what's your view yeah, on? Yeah, there's a lot of. What's your view on LA? What's my, Los Angeles. Yeah, it's overcrowded. There's too many people. There's too much traffic. Like there's, I it's just I I, I lived there when I was homeless for six months and. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's never boring. That's the thing. There's a there's a lot of people. If you want to try to flirt with some girls on the street, it, I mean, it's never an issue. It's never a problem because they're always out there. But uh, so yeah, it's easy to get food if you're homeless because there's always somebody on the street that's willing to help you out. Uh, like I used to beg. I used to go to a donut shop on Santa Monica and beg for apple fritters, and I'd always get one because <laughs> you know there's so many people. Somebody's gonna buy you one. So, so it's easy to be homeless in a big city. That it's not easy to be homeless in a small town like where I currently but, reside. But so not for that but, reason, you know. But not in Hong on. Kong. But not in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very. In Hong Kong. Yeah, being homeless in Hong Kong is like uh, it's like a hellhole. I mean. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. I mean, like nobody really gives a crap about you. They just walk by. I'm not sure about in America. Do they walk by? No. Like, if they see a homeless guy living, laying down in the street, do they pay you like that? Yeah. Do they give you money? Well, alright. Yeah, well... Uh, yeah, well, I didn't really get that much money when I was homeless, but I did get all the food I could stand, you know. I, I never went hungry. I never went without food. Well, maybe because the homeless in America aren't really that... Well, I, well, well, well I, 
like I said, it, it depends on where you are. If you're homeless in a big city, it's pretty easy. If you're homeless in a small town, it's very difficult. Well, yeah, because last time I just saw a homeless guy with a sign that's political related. You know, because Hong Kong has been really screwed up this in these recent yeah. years. You know, the protests and, and stuff like that in Hong Kong. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really, it's wow. really tough. Yeah, I can imagine, yeah. So, any, anyway, um... What, what do, where do you like like to live more? Your parents' house or your original apartment? Oh, well, probably my parents' house because look, every roommate I've had is a dick, is, is an a-hole, and they're hard to get along with, and we have arguments, and uh, there's, there's always potential for fist fighting and all that jazz, and it, it's just a lot easier to deal with... Uh, with my parents than, than any other kind of roommate. Now, if I had my, my choice, I'd have my own place, but I can't afford it. Uh, not in the state of California. Maybe if I got on section, uh, something called section eight, if I moved to another state and got on that, you know, perhaps I could get my own place, but uh, you know, I'm not ready for all that. I got a nice support system here that I don't want to give up, you know, talking about my family, talking about my parents, talking about my case manager at the mental health institution that I'm part of my psychiatrists and all that because of my schizophrenia and all that so yeah i heard i heard that you you are you don't have a job right you you're on welfare like that uh i'm on i'm on what they call social security which is pretty much welfare uh yeah i don't got a job i i'm too paranoid to work i got too many mental problems to work uh yeah it would just be way too difficult you know well actually same as me even though i'm only 17 but i yeah. i kind of have a social and anxiety i can't imagine working in a very oh, well. public work like that so this is why I, I try to choose to become a filmmaker like that making films yeah since making films you know you don't really require them that much yeah you know. yeah man. That, well, well, yeah, I'm making film like that's what I do. I make my videos. That's pretty much what I do. I, I get money off don from donations on occasion, so that, that's pretty much how I make my extra pocket money. You know. But the, your your videos, some some of your videos are monetized, from what I know. Uh, yeah, ads. some of them are. A lot of them are not. Uh, where I make my money is when I live stream people. There's uh, something called Super Chat, and people can donate you money, you know, $5, $10, $50, $100. And, uh, you know, a lot of times I'll get people donating me money on my live streams, and that's where I make the majority of my money on well, YouTube. Well, some of your videos are not monetized because you violate the monetization rule. I I just don't monetize them. I just don't care that much uh, because I'm only allowed to make a certain amount of money anyway on Social Security, like maybe up to a thousand dollars, and that's it. Anything I make over that, they take from me, and okay. I have the ability. If I make too much money, I can lose my Social Security and my insurance. So I don't want to make too much money, you know. Okay, so um, even the oh. even the video gets copyright claim. The other video will get monetized, right? Your whole channel can monetize. Because you know, last you know, yesterday, yeah, my whole... yesterday my documentary yeah. film got copyright claim because of the Lincoln soundtrack. I was yeah, like like if you use anybody else's music, any copyrighted music, you'll get a copyright claim, and all the money from the, that video will go to the the person who who made that music. So, like, if you want the money for yourself, uh, you got to use copyright-free music. So, you just go to YouTube, type in copyright-free music, and look for, a, you know, a song that you like that is copyright-free, and you'll be able to use it, and then and then all the money from the video will still go to you, to you, you know. And it doesn't affect the whole channel or the monetization, right? No, it does. It just affects that one video that... And, but it does not affect the whole channel. The whole channel. Okay. Hmm. And you spend a you spend a significant amount of time on YouTube, and who's like um 
What YouTubers do you watch the most? Who do I watch the most? I watch, uh, well, I, yeah. I watch Black Bugatti. I watch, who else? A, a guy named Andy Nowicki. He's like a really smart guy that, that has a lot of intelligent topics. I watch a lot of wrestling podcasts because I enjoy the personalities of professional wrestlers. That's how I learn to develop a personality for myself by watching professional wrestling. So I, I watch a lot of those. I watch Joe Rogan. He's a podcaster. I watch Adam Carolla. He's another podcast. So uh, various podcasts, you know, videos like that, you know. But you don't watch those like YouTubers who have millions of subs and post like ten minutes video of, you know, no. vlogs like that. You don't watch those. No, I, I don't watch any real big time YouTubers because it makes me jealous. I, I get a little bit envious when I watch a big time YouTuber because I'm not a big time YouTuber myself, and so it pisses me off when I watch a big time YouTuber. Well, you, your contents are actually better than them, to be honest. I mean, those big time YouTubers they post oh. because you know they're franchises, right? They get advertised from yeah from some big companies like. Jordan like that, Nike, Nike. So this is why I don't. Yeah. Really, yeah. So this is why I don't really enjoy those. Those franchises. Yeah, f them. Like I'm not gonna watch any big time YouTuber. Like I watch another guy named Negs N E G Z. Like he's good. I, who else do I watch? Uh, what do you a think guy about? Named Living in a van. Just some guy named. Denoy that lives in a van in, in Florida and whatnot. So various, I, I, various small YouTubers. That's who I watch. What do you think about the YouTuber Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast, yeah, I know who that is. He gives away a, a lot of money to like streamers, and YouTubers, like thirty thousand, fifty thousand dollars, this, that. Uh, I don't watch him because, again, he's a big time YouTuber, and uh, I just do not like watching big time YouTubers because I get jealous, I get envious. Yeah, better stick to Black Bugatti like that, those type. And Black Bugatti yeah. is a very yeah. interesting YouTuber. I, I've discovered him in two thousand eighteen. And yeah, he's good. I, I've met him. He's a charming man, a nice guy, and uh, yeah, I, I would like to collaborate with him again if he's ever back, you know, in my area. Maybe in the future, we three can collaborate each other. Me, you, and him. Oh, sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would be fun. But it depends on, the, again, it depends on the visa, visa shit like that. Yeah. I know why the U.S. has a tough immigration, U.S. visa, stuff like that depends on, uh, compares to other countries. I mean, yeah, bro. You know. I mean, what do you think about the immigrants swapping to a country? Uh, doesn't bother me because, uh, well, you know, I I can see why it bothers other people. You know, they, you don't want an image an immigrant coming in here and uh, like taking a job that they, you know, you could have had for yourself. Uh, it, it just, it just, when we let everybody from other countries in your that that raises the level of competition and and it makes it a lot more difficult to, to obtain your your you know your career of choice and various things but i don't care because i'm on you know pretty much welfare so i'm not in competition with anybody so i don't care like anybody who wants in listen as long as you're not a terrorist as long as you're not going to blow up a government building it's all good hmm. yeah but i remember back in the, the obama's administration it's a lot easier to get to the u.s you know, yeah. there was there was no war Basically, everyone can get to the U. Could get to the U.S. back then. Yeah. Yeah, but now Donald Trump's. You know, I'm not sure if Donald Trump will win again. What do you think? What do you think about Donald uh, Trump? I think I think he might win again. I think he might not. It it just depends on how many young people are going to vote, and uh, they're trying to. The Democrats are trying to do mail-in voting, so nobody has to vote in person. And if they do that, then certainly. Trump's gonna lose because Republicans really aren't the type to mail in votes. So, so if the Democrats get their way, Trump's gonna lose. Uh, I'm for Trump. Listen, I like Trump. I want Trump to win uh, just because I like his personality and I like the fact that he pisses off the the news. 
like American media gets pissed off at Trump, and I, there's yeah. nothing I like more than seeing the, their tears roll down their cheeks and them get triggered. So uh, for that reason, I want Trump to win. Yeah, and speaking of the news, do you know what do you yeah. think about the whole you no know, the virus current situation? They like fear, the spreading fear, like that. You know that. What do you think oh, about yeah, that? Oh yeah, they're fear mongering. They definitely are fear mongering, and and uh, probably for good reason because they don't want us spreading it. They they want to to instill fear in us so that we will stay six feet apart, so that we will wear the mask. If if they if they're lighthearted about it, if they're nonchalant about it, and, and uh, they don't instill that that kind of fear, that that kind of uh, you know to to get us to take this seriously, then we're not going to take it seriously, and we're not going to think it's a big deal. So, honestly, I think they're doing the right thing by trying to scare us because that's really the only way to get to us to make us you know act in accordance in a way that's going to stop the spread of this. So that's how I feel about it. But you know that there, like, like there are also a lot of people recovered from the virus, right? I recovered myself. A lot yeah, of a recovery. Lot of are you know, a lot yeah. of people recovering, but the news don't, the news don't uh, show that recovery rate. Yeah, again, because uh, although a lot of people are recovering, there's still a lot of death. Uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, but there's a 99% recovery rate, which is good. Most people aren't going to die, but a lot of people will die, and uh, they're trying to save those people by instilling fear in us to get us to, like I said, wear the mask, stay six feet apart, don't con conjugate in big, large groups, and so on and so forth. I understand what they're doing, and I really don't got a problem with it. Okay, and but. Most deaths are are all low, like those deaths are people who had low immune immune system, like the immune immune things now. Oh, yeah, yeah, they have, yeah, yeah, they're older people. They're people with pre-existing conditions. Certainly, yes, you know. Yeah, but you, if you're a strong person, like, uh, let's say who who's the strong, let's, like, like a very healthy and strong person, you. You have a ninety-nine or a hundred percent. You're gonna survive. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, yeah I'm trying. I, I, I understand that, but I don't like saying, "Well, you know, they're they're old, so they're gonna die anyway, so let them die." Like I, I don't like that mindset. I don't like saying, "Well, you know, he is eighty years old, so fuck him. He's gonna die anyway." So, no, I, I really don't like that. Like. Yeah, they're gonna die anyway, but maybe they got another five years. Maybe they got another ten years. And, and so, you know, I, I definitely want to protect those people by, like I said, uh, abiding by all the strategies, the masks, the six feet, uh, staying apart, and all that, you know. Okay. And have you ever had any odd dreams? Odd dreams? Uh, sure. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, not ones that I can recite here. But every time I get a nightmare, I know I'm about to have a schizophrenic attack. And that's really the only time I have nightmares. So so if I'm asleep and I wake up after having a nightmare, I know I'm about to suffer a bout of schizophrenia. Okay, because I, I also have like, I also have very weird dreams these days, you know. Yeah. I don't want dreaming about. It's like, you know, I'm... You know, schools schools are suspended these days, this month because of that thing, and I've been dreaming about me staying in the yeah. class like that. It's very weird. I mean, maybe I miss school. No, what? Oh, you miss school? Yeah, but no, I'm seventeen. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't play. Well, next year is my final year of high school. This year, this September. Oh yeah. My final year of high school maybe. After that, after graduating, I have more time, you know, interviewing someone. Nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah I got, uh, I got, I got two adopted siblings. They're seventeen, going into their final year as well. Uh, only they got to do it online, so they're not too pleased with having to do online school themselves, you know. Okay, and yeah, maybe af after. Let me see if, if I accumulate some money, 
I'll try to visit you as much as possible. You and Big, you and Bugatti. I try to reach out in real, in real life person, but I'm not sure. I have to have to save some money first. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm willing to meet. I'm down to meet. You know, I'm down to meet anybody. And well, have you met any weirdos to contact you before? In real I've life? Not. Well, I have not met any weirdos in person. I have met several weirdos <laughs> who write me on the internet. Uh, you know, all the time I meet weirdos, and uh, you know what I do with them is I pretty much talk to them, I engage them, I befriend them. It's better to keep the dog on a leash than to unleash the dog and let him bite everybody and. and uh, and murder everybody and assassinate everybody. Uh, it, it's better to befriend the person as opposed to to blow them off and have them kill you out out of resentment because because you you rejected them. So anybody that contacts me, I do my best to to develop a friendship with them. How do you know they're weirdos? Like what kind of tone and such a sophisticated writing they write? <laughs> It's, it's not so much, well, I, I guess I, I, I determine they're weird based upon what they talk about, how they write. Like, uh, you know, maybe they make videos themselves and I can sense they, they, they're kind of socially awkward and uh, they don't really know how to carry themselves. And uh, there's, I mean, you you know a weird person when you see them. You know, they act in weird ways. They, they communicate in weird ways. And listen, there's nothing wrong with being socially awkward. There's nothing wrong with being weird. It doesn't mean that you're a bad person because I used to be weird and socially awkward myself. So I see where they're coming from. But yeah, you know, so I, you know, I pretty much, I just befriend everybody. I'm everybody's friend. I don't want anybody to feel rejected by me and then go out of the way, their way to try to kill me. Uh, that would not be good. So I'm friends with everyone. Yeah, me either. I mean, I'm I'm not really that very spoken in school. I'm actually kind of so, especially yeah. when, when I was in elementary school, I was kind of socially awkward. You know, back yeah. when, when I first got into elementary, even in kindergarten, I was I was like cursed by some kids, being Hello. in kindergarten. Yeah. You know, to be honest, the Hong Kong kids sometimes are a kind of. What was what what's what's the word I'm trying to look for? I mean, uh, the Hong I Kong, the Hong Kong kids are kind of sometimes the arrogant like that. They're kind of rude. Arrogant, yeah. There you go. Maybe you you should come yeah. to Hong, you should come to Hong Kong sometimes and, and see. I would if I could afford it. You know that. The flights are pretty expensive, and I don't got a lot of money. But uh, you know, in the event I, I could afford it, I would definitely go. Well, my, well, but, but you, but do you have any criminal record like that? Oh yeah, I actually do. Yeah, I have. Uh, I think I have assault and battery. And we talked about that when I was in L.A. and I tried to steal a burrito and I got caught and I, I cut, threw a couple of chairs in a sign and I ran away and oh, yeah. the, the owner chased me and left. Yeah, I, I, know, yeah, I, I remember that. And that's, still on, that's still on my record. That's only one felon, right? One felon only? That's a misdemeanor. I have Mister no Mi felonies. Okay, Mister misdemeanor. Only one record, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay, but I know that some... Uh, I remember Black Bugatti had had twelve records, <laughs> felon fel felonies like that. Oh well, yeah. But maybe if you did not go crazy at that time, maybe you did. Now you wouldn't have that record. Yeah, I would not. If I didn't have that schizophrenic breakdown, I would not have any record. Okay. Hold so, on. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. A Hold on a second, wait. <laughs>